Hi friends, now in this lecture I am going to explain you about the arm. As you know, I, I hope you know the difference between the arm, hand and forearm. This is the arm, this is the shoulder, this is shoulder joint and this is arm and this is elbow and from the elbow continues as forearm and then wrist joint and then there will be the hand then you know the difference of course everyone knows it just to clear the difference between arm and forearm i drew it okay then now arm has any other component or any other part of our body has skin then superficial fascia then deep fascia and then the muscles so now the deep fascia encloses the arm just like a sieve and then there will be rhizal of two septa that is medial intermuscular septum and lateral intermuscular septum you can see this is the humerus and this humerus as you know has two condyles epicondyles medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle meet from the medial epicondyle and to the deep fascia there will be a septum which arises and this septum is called medial intermuscular septum this one is medial intermuscular septum and the septum which arises from lateral epicondyle and this enclosed i mean and it touches the deep fascia it is lateral intermuscular septum this medial intermuscular septum and lateral intermuscular septum divide the whole arm into two compartments that is anterior compartment and the other is posterior compartment okay now in this lecture mainly we are dealing with the anterior compartment of arm so in each and every compartment that you will be seeing in upper limb lower limb and everywhere you will be dealing with three main things one is muscles and the other is nerve supply and arterial supply so the muscles that you are you will be seeing in this anterior compartment is one is biceps brachii and the second is coraco brachialis and what is the third muscle it is uh, brachialis and what is the nerve supply of anterior compartment anterior compartment nerve supply is musculocutaneous nerve I think you must have remembered that the muscular cutaneous nerve is the continuation of lateral cord of brachial plexus and then the artery is brachial artery so now i am i am going to deal with all these muscles nerves and arteries of anterior compartment in this lecture so let us see the muscles first so what are the muscles that you will be dealing with in this and what do we say anterior compartment as i said the muscles are biceps brachii coraco brachialis and brachialis the first muscle that you are seeing uh, that i am going to explain you is biceps brachii so what is the origin of biceps brachii biceps brachii has two heads long head and the short head short yeah long head of biceps brachii takes its origin from supraglenoid tubercle and short head supraglenoid tubercle of scapula supraglenoid tuber this is glenoid cavity this is glenoid labrum and above that there will be a tubercle that is supraglenoid tubercle of scapula and the short this is long head and the short head takes its origin from the coracoid process along with coracobrachialis muscle this is the origins of biceps brachii that is long head and the short head long head from supraglenoid tubercle and the short head from the uh, coracoid process along with coracobrachialis and what is where is it inserted it is inserted to the radial tuberosity there is a tuberosity which is present in radius and this is radial tuberosity it is inserted here so what is uh, how does the muscle go see it goes like this and it carves the almost whole of the arm this is the first muscle that you will be seeing when you remove the superficial fascia when you remove the superficial fascia the first muscle that you will be seeing is this biceps 
brachii and here it forms a tendon like structure and gets inserted into the radial tuberosity which is present on the radius bone this is radius bone and this is ulna bone as you know so this is inserted to the radial tuberosity this is biceps brachii and the nerve supply of biceps brachii is musculocutaneous nerve all the three muscles nerve supply is musculocutaneous nerve and then the action of biceps brachii see it is attached from the scapula to the humeral to the radius so what does it do it contracts then these bones of radius are like this so when it contracts the bones move like this so it contracts so as a result the bones which are like this they move like this see they move like this and thus it helps in flexion of elbow so this is my elbow you will see this helps in flexion of elbow that is flexion of elbow which what this biceps brachii does so this is biceps brachii the next muscle that you are learning here is coracobrachialis coracobrachialis as the name says coraco is coracoid process brachialis is arm so it is the muscle of arm so what is where does it takes its origin as the name suggests the coracobrachialis muscle originates from coracoid process so this is the coracoid process and it takes its origin here so that is the origin of coracobrachialis coracobrachialis arises along with the short head of biceps brachii and where does it get inserted it gets inserted to the middle of the medial border of humerus this is medial border to that the middle of the medial border it is inserted and now how does you how do how see how the muscle is it is like this so whenever you uh, dissect or if you remove this uh, biceps brachii muscle or reflect this biceps brachii then the muscle that you will be seeing on the medial aspect is this coracobrachialis this is the coracobrachialis muscle okay this is coracobrachialis so what is the nerve supply of this muscle as i said the nerve supply is which which nerve musculocutaneous nerve it is a branch of lateral cord of brachial plexus okay now the action action of coracobrachialis the coracobrachialis action is in the arm it's not in the elbow see here it is attached to the elbow and has a result when it flexes like this the elbow joint flexor flexion of elbow occurs in biceps brachii but here what happens whenever it moves like this the whole humerus moves like this so it is flexion of arm flexion of shoulder joint it's not the, it's not attached to elbow so it has nothing to do with elbow joint the coracobrachialis muscle action is to flex this joint shoulder joint because when it contracts like this this is there when it contracts like this then this whole humerus moves like this now this is coracobrachialis and then the third muscle which you are going to see here is brachialis muscle so this brachialis muscle it takes its origin from the lower half of anterior uh, anterior lateral and anterior medial surfaces of humerus humerus has anterior border and anterior lateral and anterior medial surfaces it is deltoid tuberosity so the so what do we say this brachia this is brachialis this brachialis muscle takes its origin from the anterior border first and then anterior lateral and anterior medial surfaces of humerus so all this is the origin of brachialis and where does it get inserted it is inserted into the anterior surface of coronoid process of ulna for the ulna you will be having two processes coronoid process and the olecranon process so to the coronoid process it is attached how does the muscle orient the muscle orientation will be like this so here it has nothing to do with the this joint shoulder joint but it has everything to do with elbow joint so whenever it contracts it is a strong flexor of elbow so it helps to elbow to move like this so it moves like this so see see the range of muscles which are present see the beauty of this muscles biceps brachii helps in flexion of this arm a little and the flexion of the elbow mostly but it's a weak flexor mainly but it helps in flexion of arm and flexion of elbow whereas coracobrachialis what does it do it has nothing to do with elbow it has everything to do with arm so what does it do it, it helps in the flexion of the arm and adduction of the arm what does the brachialis do the brachialis it's not attached to the scapula or humerus so it doesn't do it does it does nothing with the arm it has everything to do with only the elbow joint so as a result whenever it contracts so the radius and ulna move like this so as a result there will be flexion first it is like this whenever this contracts so this moves like this 
Again, this is brachialis. All these are the muscles of the upper limb. Now you can see the beauty of the upper limb muscles that are anterior compartment of upper limb. So now, so let us see the, what do we say, uh, nerve supply. The nerve supply, as I said, it's by musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve, it's, uh, it's the continuation of lateral cord of brachial plexus, as I said. So now I'm just, I, would, I just wanted to draw the course of that nerve along with the muscles. So just be, be patient to see. So this is the coracoid process of scapula. As I said, two muscles arise from coracoid process. First, let's go from superficial to deep. Okay, the first muscle is brachialis. So, sorry, biceps brachii. I'm just cutting the biceps brachii because to see the other. So, biceps brachii will be like this. But if I cut the biceps brachii, so it will be like this. So, you can see it like this. Okay. Okay, this is biceps brachii. And from this one, other muscle which arises is coracobrachialis. So, this is coracobrachialis. Okay. And the third muscle of this is, it arises from anterior lateral and anterior medial surfaces of humerus. So, it will be like this. This is brachialis. Biceps brachii, coracobrachialis and brachialis. The orientation will be like this if you see in the arm. So wherever you reflect the biceps brachii, then you will be seeing this coracobrachialis and this brachialis muscle. Okay, now see the nerve. So in order to see the nerve, which color is this? Okay, let me draw with black itself the nerve. Okay, these are the brachial plexus. And this is the median nerve which is formed from median and lateral cord. So from the lateral cord, there will be the core. What do we say? Musculocutaneous nerve. This is musculocutaneous nerve. First, the musculocutaneous nerve pierces the coracobrachialis muscle. See, it turns downwards by piercing the coracobrachialis muscle. So, musculocutaneous nerve pierces the coracobrachialis muscle. And it comes like this. It pierced it. And then it runs below. The, this is below. If I draw in dots, it's that it, the, some, the, the thing that is above is superficial. This is superficial and this nerve is deep to it. So it nerves below, it, it lies below the biceps brachii. It goes below the biceps brachii and it comes like this. And it runs above the brachialis muscle. And then again it lies below the bicep, uh, biceps brachii. And then it continues as lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Not arm, forearm, sorry, lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm because after biceps brachii you will be seeing only forearm. So lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. So this is the muscular cutaneous nerve. You have, you must have understood. These are the brachial plexus. So from the lateral cord, the muscular cutaneous nerve, that is continuation of lateral cord gives the muscular cutaneous nerve. This muscular cutaneous nerve first pierces the coracobrachialis muscle and then it goes downwards. While running downwards, it runs deep to the biceps brachii muscle and then it runs deep to the biceps brachii itself. The total biceps brachii will be like this and after a distance it lies superficial to the biceps brachialis muscle and deep to the biceps brachii. That means it lies between brachialis and biceps brachii muscle and then it goes like this and it continues as lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. So this is the course of musculocutaneous nerve. So what are the branches? The branches are, as I said, first is muscular branches to all these muscles. Okay. And the, the, the second branch, as you see, cutaneous branch, that is nothing but lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm is the cutaneous branch. And then articular branch. It is to elbow joint. See, it's for elbow joint. Okay. So all these are branches. The first branch is muscular branches which are to all these muscles that is biceps brachii, coracobrachialis and brachialis muscles. And cutaneous branch is nothing but continuous. It continues as lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. So it is the cutaneous branch. Whereas the articular branch it is to the elbow joint. So all this comes the musculocutaneous nerve. So next, after nerve what is there? It's nothing but the artery. So what is the artery? Of this is brachial artery okay and the main clinical site of this musculocutaneous nerve is whenever the musculocutaneous nerve is injured see there is injury of musculocutaneous nerve then what happens all these muscles are paralyzed that means all these the, the actions that are done by all these muscles is not done that is the main action of bicep brachii what is it flexion flexion of at the shoulder joint and flexion at the arm so there is no flexion that is loss of flexion 
and even there is biceps reflex if you say go to physiology then you will be seeing biceps reflexes even that biceps reflex is absent here and there will be even this lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm is not there because because of the paralysis or injury of musculocutaneous nerve lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm doesn't work and as a result all the cutaneous supply is lost so this is uh, happened if there is an injury to musculocutaneous nerve what does it happens all the flexions were lost the biceps tendon reflex is lost and also because of the absence of or loss of lateral cutaneous nerve or forearm there is no cutaneous supply to the lateral aspect of forearm so this is musculocutaneous nerve and what is there is the next muscles completed nerve completed and the thing that you will be learning now is the artery so what is the artery it's nothing but brachial artery see it will be like this yeah it will be like this okay and this is humerus totally see it is like this continuation humerus mm. see it will be like this okay so it is teres major I think that this is teres major and it is a nerve this is what teres major so the thing is if you have listened the axillary artery lecture or if you know about axillary artery axillary artery continues has brachial artery just below the lower border of teres major so here it is axillary artery first and here it becomes the brachial artery okay now what happens the big brachial artery it is the main artery of arm so it supplies all these muscles it gives some branches muscular branches to all these muscles which we have learned now that is brachialis coraco brachialis and biceps brachii now see the course the brachial artery runs downwards mainly in the middle of the humerus and then it runs like this it runs downwards vertically and then at the neck of the radius this is the neck of the radius right at the neck of the radius it divides into two branches that is radial artery and the second is ulnar artery so this is the brachial artery so the thing that you have to learn in brachial artery what is it anteriorly what are there posteriorly what are there medially what are there and laterally what are there so first before learning that you should remember one nerve so the nerve here is the brachial artery is crossed by the median nerve from medial to lateral from lateral to medial side yeah so this is the see this is the median nerve this median nerve crosses the artery like this and it becomes lateral medial to the artery that is the median nerve crosses the artery lateral to medial okay and then what does the ulnar nerve do ulnar nerve runs yeah it's medial to the artery up to a distance and then it goes posteriorly pitch him by piercing the medial intermuscular septum all that we'll be learning in now later so this is ulnar artery so what are the relations see anteriorly in the upper part this brachial artery has medial cutaneous nerve of forearm in front of it as you know medial cutaneous nerve of forearm it is one of the branch of brachial plexus uh which you will which you will be seeing that medial cord of brachial plexus gives medial cutaneous nerve of arm it is anteriorly in the upper part and in the middle part as i said it is crossed by the medial nerve from lateral to median side in the lower side lower part it is covered by bicepital aponeurosis bicepital aponeurosis covers me it is it is it covers this brachial artery anteriorly all these three are the anterior relations what are the posterior relations posterior relations are nothing but the muscles which are below what are the muscles as you know 
this see this brachial artery is just seen whenever if you reflect the biceps so biceps brachia if you reflect then you will be seeing this brachial artery so biceps has no nothing to do with posterior relation it is the anterior relation so if you reflect the biceps what are there brachialis is there coracobrachialis is there so see it comes like this so <coughs> See, it comes like this. So, it crosses, it, it is above the coracobrachialis. And then, it is above the bicep, this is brachialis. And even it is above the triceps. Because triceps is the posterior compartment muscle. So, what are the posterior relations? Is coracobrachialis, brachialis and even triceps. Then, what is medial relation? As I said, the median relation is, in the upper part, I said the me, ulnar nerve is median. And then in the middle part, this ulnar nerve goes to the posterior compartment mainly. So as a result, it crosses from median compartment, anterior compartment to posterior compartment in the middle. That means up to the middle, that is upper part, this ulnar nerve forms the median relation. That is ulnar nerve, medial relation, upper part. Then in the later and in the lower part, <coughs> median relation is nothing but the median nerve. In the lower part. Median relation is formed by median nerve. And what are lateral? Lateral is upper part it is median nerve. And in the lower part it is tendon of biceps brachii. It is tendon of biceps brachii. All these are the relations. So a little logic is required. So let me repeat again so that you will understand clearly. Anteriorly see. In the upper part there will be medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. And in the middle part you can see. The median nerve is crossed from lateral side to medial side. So it is like this and in the lower part above there will be bicipital aponeurus okay and next posteriorly posteriorly this this brachial artery lies below the base biceps brachii so as a result the posterior relations are coracobrachialis brachialis and then triceps all these three um, three muscles are the posterior relation okay next medial relation medially you can see the ulnar art nerve and even the basilic vein, these are in the upper part. And in the lower part, you can see this median nerve. Because it crosses from lateral to medial side. So, in the lower part, this median nerve forms the medial relation. What is lateral relation? In the upper part, it is median nerve. And in the lower part, what is there is biceps tendon passes through it. So, all these are the relations. And then what are the branches? Branches are muscular branches to all these muscles. And one branch is profunda brachii artery, which is an artery of posterior compartment. This profunda brachii artery, along with radial nerve, it enters the posterior compartment. I mean, it enters the posterior compartment, again comes to the anterior compartment. We will be learning this in the next lecture, in the posterior compartment lecture. And then, there is profunda brachii, and then nutrient artery. And it gives superior ulnar collateral artery, inferior ulnar collateral artery. These two arteries participates in anastomosis around the elbow joint, which we'll be learning later. Superior ulnar collateral arteries and inferior ulnar collateral artery. They run like this. Superior ulnar collateral arteries, inferior ulnar collateral artery. Superior goes to the back. And inferior, I mean, superior goes to posterior aspect and inferior is anterior aspect. So, this is inferior ulnar collateral arteries. This has gone to back, so it is superior ulnar collateral arteries. And profunda brachii arises here, it goes to the posterior compartment for some time and then it enters again, enters the anterior compartment. So, this is profunda brachii artery. And the final branches are ulnar and radial arteries. So, what are the branches? The branches are, one is profunda brachii artery and next is muscular branches to all these muscles and then superior ulnar collateral artery, inferior ulnar collateral artery and then ulnar and radial arteries. All these are the branches of brachial artery. So as I said, I have completed the muscles, all the three nerves, musculocutaneous nerve and artery is brachial artery. So this is the anterior compartment of arm. Okay then, bye.